Baseball is about homecoming. It is a journey by theft and strength, guile and speed, out around first to the far island of second, where foes lurk in the reeds and the green sea suddenly grows deeper, then to turn sharply, skimming the shallows, making for a shore that will show a friendly face, a color, a familiar language, and at third to proceed no longer by paths indirect, but straight to home. Hello, friend, welcome me home again. I've been away, but that's all over now, now. Say I can stay for October now. Stay wild and play. In the first two games of the World Series, the San Francisco Giants have run into some tremendous pitching. Dave Stewart of the A's threw a shutout in game one. And Mike Moore in the Oakland bullpen did the job in game two. And the plate punch has been provided by people like Dave Parker and Terry Steinbach. And the A's have won the first two games of the World Series and are halfway to their first world title since 1974. The giant dugout full of long faces all weekend. Hello. Tonight, the Giants home to host the A's in game three. Hello, old friend. And home for the Giants, one of the most spectacular vistas on this continent, any continent. Downtown San Francisco in the background, and we zoom into Candlestick Park in the southeastern corner of this city. For the first time in 27 years, a World Series game will be played in Candlestick Park. The Battle of the Bay continues. Game three of the 1989 World Series, the Oakland Athletics against the San Francisco Giants. I'm Al Michaels. Welcome to game three. It's been dominant Oakland pitching of course in the first two games. So Roger Craig has made some changes in the Giants lineup. Ken Oberkfell the great pinch hitter will start at third base. Matt Williams moves from thir third base to shortstop. Jose Uribe is on the bench. Pat Sheridan takes over for Candy Maldonado in right field. Now the Giants of course are faced with a formidable task having to win four or five in essence to win the world title. It has become less uncommon though in recent years for teams to overcome a two love deficit. Most recently it was done by the New York Mets in 1986 against the Boston Red Sox and it was done the year before as well in 1985 by Kansas City against St. Louis. So the Giants tonight will be sending Don Robinson to the mound and for Oakland it will be Bob Welch and there's no designated hitter in effect in the National League Park. Let me turn now to Tim McCarver and you know Tim we talked in game one the final score was five nothing but there was a key early play involving Terry Kennedy dropping a throw from Will Clark at the play we go back to game two the score was five to one but there were two key plays early in that one as well well you don't often think of key plays in a five to one ball game but let's go back to the top of the third inning will Clark the batter the Giants have not had the lead in these two games a three two count a split finger fastball by Mike Moore pounced on by Terry Steinbach the Oakland catcher but look at the tough throw that he had to complete the play with Brett Butler running between him and Clark Flash forward to the bottom of the fourth inning. Dave Parker barely by inches just misses a home run. Candy Maldonado with the hesitation allowing Jose Canseco to score and he fails to get Dave Parker at second base. So the Oakland A's take. take I'll tell you what we're having a
<laughs> I don't know if we're on the air. We are in commercial, I guess. Yes, yes, we hear you. I guess I don't hear a thing. I guess Dave Parker. Well, folks, that's the greatest open in the history of television, bar none. <laughs> yes, it certainly did. <laughs> We're still here. <laughs> we are still, as we can tell, on the air, and I guess you are hearing us, even though we have no picture and no return audio, and we will be back, we hope, from San Francisco in just a moment. Go, California. Game three of the 1989 World Series. The Oakland Athletics and the San Francisco Giants with the A's leading in the World Series, two games to none. Hi again, everyone. I'm Al Michaels. At this very moment, 10 days ago, we began our telecast with an aerial view of San Francisco, always a spectacular sight, and particularly so on that day because the cloudless sky of October 17th was ice blue and the reflections of the late day sun sparkled like a thousand jewels. That picture was very much a, a mirror of the feel and the mood that had enveloped the Bay Area and indeed most of Northern California. Their baseball teams, the Giants and the Athletics, had won pennants, and the people of this region were still basking in the afterglow of each team's success. And this great American sporting classic, the World Series, was for the time being exclusively theirs. Then, of course, that feeling of pure radiance was transformed into horror and grief and despair in 15 seconds. And now, on October 27th, like a fighter who's taken a vicious blow to the stomach and has groggily arisen, this region moves on and moves ahead. And one part of that scenario is the resumption of the World Series. No one in this ballpark tonight, no player, no vendor, no fan, no writer, no announcer, in fact, no one in this area, period, can forget the images, the column of smoke in the marina, the severed bridge, the grotesque tangle of concrete in Oakland. The pictures are embedded in our minds. And while the mourning and the agonizing and the after effects continue, in about 30 minutes, the plate umpire, Vic Voltaggio, will say, play ball. And the players will play, the vendors will sell, the crowd will exhort, the announcers will announce. And for many of the six million people in this region, it will be like revisiting Fantasyland. But Fantasyland is where baseball comes from anyway. And maybe right about now, that's the perfect place for a three hour rest. Before the game tonight, you'll hear from the commissioner of baseball, the mayors of San Francisco and Oakland, and the managers of the two teams. Right now, to Gary Thorne with Faye Vincent. Thank you, Al. Commissioner, uh, the winds of fate in the past six months have certainly found you. Your personal thoughts as you get set for a game three here tonight? Well, they're complicated thoughts. I guess I think first of the people who've suffered uh, the last two weeks. I'm sorry for them. I'm delighted, on the other hand, that baseball can be a symbol of recovery. And, and I guess personally, I'm just thrilled to be able to see a good ball game. As you get ready for this one, there's been so much discussion about putting the game in perspective. Your comment on that? Well, I think one of our objectives was to keep baseball in its place over this last uh, week and a half. I think we did that. Now I think baseball belongs where it is, uh, on the field, and we're very happy to be playing. And all the discussion also about what it might do for this area. By the sound of this crowd tonight, they are ready for the game to be played. Well, they are. That's not a surprise to me. I had every belief that they would uh, be ready for baseball. Now I think this represents a recovery of San Francisco and the area. It's a wonderful feeling. Commissioner, thank you. Thank you, Gary. Al? Okay, Gary, there is a special ceremony about to take place. For that, let's join the PA announcer, Jeffrey Bonds. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we ask that you please rise for a special ceremony. Ten days ago at this time, as we prepared for Game 3 of the World Series here at Candlestick Park, a major earthquake shook Northern California killing dozens of people in widespread destruction throughout the Bay Area. Please join together now to observe a moment of silence in memory of those who perished in this disaster.
配球。Ladies and gentlemen, Major League Baseball, the San Francisco Giants, and the Oakland A's share not only in the community's tragic sense of loss, but also in its legendary spirit of resurrection from such a catastrophe. Nowhere is the spirit embodied more than in the 1936 song "San Francisco," as popularized by Jeanette McDonald in the film of the same name about the city's recovery from the great earthquake and fire of 1906. In tribute to this undaunted vitality of Northern California, and to your own camaraderie as baseball fans, let's all turn and shake hands with those around us. Then join with the cast of the award-winning San Francisco Musical Review, Beach Blanket Babylon, for a rousing rendition of San Francisco. In San Francisco, Candlestick Park, gorgeous late afternoon, temperature in the 60s, and I'm joined by two men who have been rather busy of late. Art Agnos is with me, the mayor of San Francisco, and across the bay in his office in Oakland is Mayor Lionel Wilson. And Mayor Agnos, I'll begin with you. How is the recovery process going for your city, the city of San Francisco? It's superb. San Francisco is ready and is. As hot as the World Series is right out there today, the cable cars are running. Chinatown is bustling. Fisherman's Wharf is open, and the city is back, just like the World Series. What about the major problems that you will have ahead now? Well, our major problems are going to be、uh, rebuilding the homes that were affected in that small part of the city that in the marina that was so heavily impacted. A couple of other isolated areas, and the people of this、uh, city have rebounded superbly. We've gotten tremendous support. From all over the nation, from every American, it seems as though have been terrific. Mayor Wilson, how about your city, the city of Oakland, and its recovery process? How is it going? Well,、uh, we're well on the way to recovery,、uh, although it's early yet because there have been so many aftershocks that that、uh, it's difficult to tell what the final、uh, tally is going to be in terms of the damage, but. The people are together.、Uh, it's been marvelous to see the way the people and the community have have come together. I've never seen them come together around any other problem or any other issue. The way they have come together around、uh, this、uh, earthquake and the problems entailed to it. So we're coming along well. The most important problem, sir, that you and your city will face in the near future. What will they be? Well, the most important problem for us also will be housing. Uh, housing those whom we had to dispossess, those we had to evacuate out of their homes,、uh, of whatever na、uh, nature they were, and the rebuilding and providing houses and homes for the people. Your Coliseum, we understand, will be ready for games six and seven, but I would assume you are hoping that、uh, that's a moot point at this point. Well, it is a moot point, and our Coliseum is ready. It's ready right now, and. And、uh, if we had to go today, as far as the Coliseum itself is concerned, that Coliseum would be ready. So it's in good shape. 
A final thought from you, Mayor Agnos? Well, I just want to say thank you to the Commissioner of Baseball and Major League Baseball for the extraordinary contribution that they've made uh, in terms of their understanding, their sympathy, as have all Americans around the country and, fi fr and friends from all over the world, uh, Japan and Taiwan. And a lot of people have been asking what they can do to help, and I'd just like to say that the Northern California Earthquake Fund, care of the Bank of America, or they can call a toll-free number of 1-900-386-0101 to help us uh, with this recovery. We're very grateful to everyone. All right, gentlemen, thank you very much. Game three of the World Series coming up shortly. We'll return to Candlestick Park right after this message and an ABC News Brief. Candlestick Park in San Francisco continues to fill up for Game 3 of the World Series, once again to the PA announcer, Jeffrey Bonds. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Candlestick Park for Game 3 of the 1989 World Series. With tonight's starting lineups, here's the voice of the San Francisco Giants, Hank Greenwald. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Here are the starting lineups for tonight's game. First, from the American League champion, Oakland A's. The manager, number 10, Tony La Russa. Leading off, left fielder, number 24, Ricky Henderson. Carney Lansford. Hitting third and playing right field, number 33, Jose Canseco. Batting cleanup, first baseman, number 25, Mark McGuire. Number 42, Dave Henderson. Batting sixth and catching, number 36, Terry Steinbach. Hitting seventh, the second baseman, number two, Tony Phillips. Number seven, Walt And batting ninth and pitching for the A's tonight, warming up in the bullpen, number 34, Dave Stewart. And the rest of the non-starters and coaches for the Oakland A's. Kevin Mitchell. Hitting fifth and playing third base, number 10, Ken Overfell. Batting sixth, the 
shortstop, number nine, Matt Williams. Hitting seventh and catching, number 16, Terry Kennedy. Batting eighth and playing right field, number 25, Pat Sheridan. for the Giants tonight, warming up in the bullpen, number 50, Scott Gurels. And the rest of the non-starters and coaches for the San Francisco Giants. Ladies and gentlemen, please direct your attention to center field. Presenting the colors for tonight's game, the Letterman Army Medical Center color guard from the Presidio of San Francisco. And now, ladies and gentlemen, may we ask that you please rise to honor America with the singing of our national anthem. Please welcome national recording artists Larry, Steve, and Rudy, the Gatlin Brothers. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag. after this message courtesy of Major League Baseball and a word from our ABC stations. Normally the best month and a classic example today at about 25 past 5 on this Friday afternoon. It's gorgeous in the Bay Area. Temperature in the low 60s in San Francisco. Candlestick Park is filling up. 60,000 or so will look on tonight as we get set for the resumption of the 1989 World Series. As the American League champion Oakland A's take on the National League champion San Francisco Giants, the A's leading in the series two games to nothing. I'm Al Michaels. Where were we? A long, long time ago, Ricky Henderson was stealing bases and hitting home runs, and there was something about Cito Gaston saying that Dennis Eckersley was doctoring the baseball, and the A's were beating Toronto to win the American League playoffs. And a long, long time ago, Will Clark hit a single up the middle in the eighth inning against the Chicago Cubs off Mitch Williams and the Giants won their first pennant in 27 seasons. And once upon a time, Dave Stewart pitched a shutout in Oakland in game one of the World Series. And once upon a time, Mike Moore pitched very well. Eckersley came out of the pen and Terry Steinbach hit a three-run homer. And the Oakland A's led in the World Series two games to nothing. And now we're back. 
And now I'm back, <laughs> delighted to be joined by, by Tim McCarver. Just share your thoughts as we get set for game three here, Tim. Well, Al, I, I think the question of preparedness are prominent in all of our minds. Just how prepared are these two teams to play after the long layoff? The San Francisco Giants with the best home record in the National League, 53 and 28. But will that be neutralized because of the layoffs and, and a very, very good Oakland Athletics team? As far as the athletics are concerned, remember when we talked about the focus the athletics had back in games one and two, being beaten by the Dodgers last year? Well, you've got to wonder about whether the athletics are going to be interrupted as far as their play is concerned. I mean, after all, both teams have been off 10 days, and to allay that, Tony La Russa took his team to Phoenix, and by the way, they beat their winner instructional league team yesterday, seven to nothing, so their winning streak still intact. In front of several thousand fans. Right. They came back last night. The Giants, of course, have remained here. Jim Palmer also with us. Jim, your thoughts uh, as we prepare now for game three. Well, my thought, of course, I'm proud to be an ex-baseball player because I feel that the commissioner of baseball, Faye Jensen, did an outstanding job, uh, very sensitive to the needs of the San Francisco people and, and everybody in this area. But if you go back to a question, and it's a question I've gotten, who's going to dominate? Is it going to be the pitchers or is it going to the hitters? It's going to be the pitcher. And not, I'm not saying that because I'm a former pitcher. But I'll tell you what, it's, it's, to me, the uh, interesting question is, how did each manager prepare themselves to come back here to the third game? How do you face a Dave Stewart? Well, they just took batting practice if you're Roger Craig and the Giants. Tony La Russa, and it's the thing that Al Michaels told you about in game one and two, they are focused. I believe he made them have inner squad games because he felt they'd be better. Ricky Henderson said it best. He said, we're prepared for this game because we have faced the best pitching in baseball, our pitching. On the subject of managers, a little earlier, our Joe Morgan talked with both managers. Roger Craig of the Giants, Tony La Russa of the A's. Tony, you and Roger have had to deal with some circumstances unparalleled in the history of the World Series. You dealt with yours by taking your team to Phoenix. Was the weather a consideration, or you just thought you had to do something different? Well, absolutely, Joe. The only reason to go down there was we had a forecast of rain either Wednesday or probably Thursday. Our outfield was so wet that we thought, well, to get ready, we don't want to miss some of this hitting. As it turned out, there were two beautiful days. If you'd have guaranteed that weather, we'd have been better off staying. Were you satisfied with the performance you got down in Phoenix? Well, we, were, we, we worked out fine. We got the work in. Uh, I don't think anybody could have predicted that we'd have had the crowds down there. It just showed us that I think people are very excited about baseball and are happy to see us playing it. No batting practice today. Well, we're going to slip in a little bit here at the end. We did a real tough uh, time coming across San Mateo, but uh, some way, somehow, we'll be ready for whatever Roger has in store for us. <laughs> Roger, you went about yours differently. You kept the Giants here, played a few practice games, but then you stopped that. Well, we worked out the first two days after the, the earthquake, uh, Joe. Then I, I didn't see the intensity, the desire, the players were not having any fun hitting off the guys, you know, throwing 95 miles an hour. So I just called a day off and let them come back and just take batting practice, kind of do what they wanted to do put the fun back in the game. I think the psychological effect had more to do with it than the physical effect, and uh, I think we're as ready as we can be. The intensity going to be there tonight? I think so. I think you can see now, as you look around, uh, the, the stands are filling up. Uh, it's going to be a great night for baseball, and I think once they throw out the first pitch, it's going to be just like it was. I don't think you'll even know what happened. I think it'll be a good game. Let's have a good ball game. And that first pitch is just moments away at Candlestick Park, game three of the 1989 World Series. And the pitching matchup tonight, Dave Stewart for Oakland, Scott Gereltz for San Francisco. Ladies and gentlemen, may we direct your attention to the pitcher's mound for a very special ceremony. In the aftermath of last week's earthquake, thousands of public servants and volunteers from scores of local and regional agencies, along with hundreds of ordinary citizens, performed heroically in the rescue and recovery efforts throughout the Bay Area. In recognition of these efforts, these 12 individuals are with us this evening to represent their organizations and to symbolize their countless co-workers and neighbors who also gave unselfishly in this dark hour. Throwing out tonight's ceremonial first ball are San Francisco firefighter Jerry Shannon, the medical director of Oakland Highlands Hospital, Dr. Floyd Hume, Pacific Gas and Electric Company gas serviceman Dave Lopez, San Francisco Police Officer Alvin Wong, Caltrans Associate Bridge Engineer Steve Whipple, California Conservation Corps San Francisco Branch Volunteer Juan Mancada, Oakland Fire Department Captain Ron Carter, 
Santa Cruz County Red Cross Chapter Chairwoman Corey Livingston, Pacific Bell District Manager John Adzez, Santa Cruz Area Salvation Army Volunteer Shelly Cruz, California Highway Patrol Lieutenant Clifford Gray, and San Francisco Deputy Sheriff Terry Tussie. Thank you very much, and the Bay Area salutes you for your great effort in this time of need. An unforgettable moment at Candlestick Park in San Francisco, where this crowd, and if you were with us during the introduction of the starting lineups, naturally the Giants, this being their home park, the crowd very much into it very much into it no question some thought perhaps the response would be somewhat muted early on and then might build but no sir as the Giants take the field really the bonding and the banning together of the entire region starting pitcher in game one of the World Series which took place 13 nights ago at the Oakland Coliseum among the things that have happened while we were waiting for the series to resume there's an entire change in both pitching rotations in the original game three a week ago Tuesday it was going to be Don Robinson for San Francisco and Bob Welch for Oakland and now we're back to the starters in game one and the lineup for the A's with Ricky Henderson Carney Lansford and Jose Canseco hitting third Mark McGuire the cleanup hitter Dave Henderson in center Steinbach is the catcher Tony Phillips at second Walt Weiss who homered in game one off the at shortstop and again just to refresh you we're in the National League Park and that means no designated hitter Dave Parker, the A's DH, played a big role in games one and two, but he is limited to pinch hitting duty here. The pitchers will hit Mitchell Butler and Sheridan in the giant outfield. Overfell at third, Williams at short, Thompson at second, Clark at first. Kennedy back to the plate, Garrels is pitching, and because the Giants in those first two games of the World Series had only nine hits, Roger Craig was going to make these changes anyway. In game three a week ago Tuesday with Overfell at third, Williams over to short and Sheridan and right. Ricky Henderson has been throughout the postseason dominating. Most valuable player in the American League Championship Series. He is five for eight, the entire San Francisco team with nine hits among them. And Ricky Henderson has five as the leadoff batter for the Oakland Athletics. And strangely, even though he is 5 for 8, he has been much quieter in the World Series than he was against Toronto, and he dominated. So here we go. Several days later, Game 3 of the World Series is underway with a strike. And you know that baseball is back when Henderson looks back at Voltaggio on the very first pitch of the game and questions the call. The delay didn't change that, did it? No. Breaking pitch away in the count, one ball and one strike. Henderson started the season with the Yankees, then came over in June and really sparked the A's. He gets fisted and grounds it to short. Matt Williams throws him out. So Garrels 
as he was unable to do facing Henderson in game one is able to keep him off the bases as he gets him to ground out to short and Carney Lansford comes to the plate. There you saw how Williams just nursed the ball over to Clark at first. He's the youngest player in the World Series. That's lined in the center field for a base hit. So Lansford picks up his third hit of the World Series. A one-out single here in the first inning. Carney has good speed. He stole 37 bases this season. But he was not really a base-stealing threat in the first two games of the series because of a pulled hamstring. All three of his hits have come as the in the first time at bat. That's his third hit in the series, all during his first time at bat. But my point about Williams, he nursed that throw to first base. That's usually what happens until the players get the butterflies out. Jose Canseco at the plate, takes inside, ball one. Canseco, and it's been forgotten, working on a string right now. He is old for his last 23 in the last two World Series. The record is 31. He's chasing one Marv Owen who got a lot of publicity. And everybody was scrambling for stories in the past couple of days. And again it's up and in. 2-0 and, oh, and Panseco after taking two pitches inside and of all things Jose begins to go toward the mound some of the players exit the dugout but it will stop right there and La Russa comes out to talk to Voltaggio you know well, that's just misdirected passion right there I mean there's no way that Scott Garrels is throwing at Canseco under these of all circumstances under these circumstances that is very close, however, and the book on Canseco is you've got to pitch him inside. Well, you can see how close it is, and of course, Gorel, too, had some problems with his mechanical workings of his windup in the first game, having it again. So the spirit of unbound love in this region, which had even extended to these two teams, at least as far as the teams are concerned, lasts about three minutes. The 2-0 pitch is on the inside corner and the count is 2-1. Now you wondered if they were going to have uh, any intensity and you already see right there, especially a guy struggling. Don't mess with my head. It's hard to see. Twilight type of situation here in San Francisco. Clark holding Lansford on at first. One out. First inning. No score. And 2-1 and one on Canseco. Breaking pitch into the hole, and that's a base hit. Lansford will stop at second as Mitchell gets it back in. So Jose snaps the string. He had not had a World Series hit since that grand slam home run in game one against the Dodgers last year, forever forgotten because Gibson ended the game with a dramatic homer, and now a single here in the first inning. A yeah, breaking ball that he did not get in a good location. A lot of times, as you look at Roger Craig, he's got to be a little concerned. He said he would go to the bullpen in a hurry tonight. Down two games to none. Mark McGuire swings late, and the count is 0-1. Well, Craig has to manage this game as if it's the last game of the season, in effect. No team has ever come back from a 3-0 deficit in the World Series. Several, however, have come back from 0-2. And McGuire fouls it away, and the count is 0-2. And so many times you learn from your mistakes. And uh, Norm Sherry, Roger Craig, hope that Scott Gorelch learned from the mistakes he made in Game 1. He did not pitch that badly. Did give up five runs, four of them earned. Only one walk, five strikeouts. But what he did do is have very bad pitch selection did not throw the proper pitches to the proper hitters. Lansford at second, Canseco at first. One out. And the runners go as it's grounded to the hole. Williams up with it, one-handed throws to first for the out. The runners advance with Lansford now at third. 
and Canseco at second. And again, it's Matt Williams who has been playing third for the Giants for the most part through the second half of the season, was the third baseman through the playoffs into the first two games, who moves over to short and makes the play here. Pretty exciting baseball with Mark McGuire hitting and running, runners at first and second. A play that, as far as the big leagues are concerned, happened much more often this year than in past years. The first and second hit and run, you saw a lot more teams do it this year. Two on, two out, and Dave Henderson who is old for six in the World Series and hasn't hit the ball out of the infield, takes away ball one. Now, Gareltz with first base open, naturally can afford to be more careful with Henderson here, but he has Steinbach waiting on deck. In the air to right field and deep, and Sheridan goes back, and it's off the top of the fence. And in play, in play, two runs will score, and Henderson has a double. Dave saying, wasn't it a home run, but the right field umpire, Paul Runke, was down the line and there to call it. Said it hit the top of the fence and bounces back, and it's 2-0 A's and almost 3-0. And that's already more runs than Scott Corral's averages here at Candlestick Park. 1-5-7. A little bit over a run and a half. As you look, Sheridan go back. He's an outstanding defensive outfielder. Gets up, but just not high enough. Ball goes off the top of the fence. Two extra umpires, one down the left field line. Paul Runke down the right field line. Makes this call a lot easier as you see it hit right on the top of the fence. Now Steinbach pops it up in foul territory. Kennedy comes back and there is a lot of room but not enough there. And the count is 0-1. talked about a better offensive lineup but you're also talking normally about a better defensive outfielder Sheridan a lot better than Maldonado throws better better range charges the ball well and the reason Pat didn't have a chance to get back on that ball the ball didn't have a lot of hang time so Sheridan didn't have a chance to get back set himself at the fence and jump for the ball pitch away in the count one and one he jumped high enough but he didn't have it gauged correctly right. where it came down. Right. Breaking pitch away. Vertically, Sheridan was okay. Horizontally is where the problem existed. So it's 2 nothing on a double by Henderson. The first time that Henderson has hit the ball out of the infield in the three games. Good breaking pitch with the count two and two. The A's in the World Series, winning game one back of Dave Stewart, five to nothing, winning game two by a score of five to one. Steinbach hitting a three-run homer in that one. That's grounded to third, scooped up by Oberfell, and that's that in the first. But the A's get a couple to take the lead after a half. Oakland 2 and San Francisco coming up. Candlestick Park in San Francisco in the twilight. Gorgeous day in the Bay Area. The A's scoring two runs in the top of the first, and now their ace going to the mound, Dave Stewart, three years in a row. He's won 20 or more, and in postseason, two victories against Toronto. One against San Francisco in game one of the World Series. And he will be facing the Giants tonight with a revamped lineup, a different one than he saw in game one, in the sense that Oberfell is in the lineup and Sheridan is in the lineup. And then Williams drops down to the number six spot from number five. Brett Butler to lead off of the Giants. Butler, Robbie Thompson, and Will Clark in the bottom of the first. Brett, one for six in the World Series, and the first pitch to the screen, one and oh. Pat Sheridan jumping high enough, but missing the drive off Henderson's bat, and it's 2 nothing, And the count is 2 and nothing. 
Butler, Thompson, and Clark in the bottom of the first. Dave Stewart working for the first time since a week ago Saturday. Throws a strike in the count, two and one. And how they tried to get him ready for this game is to have a simulated game a week ago Thursday. That would have put him right on target for Tuesday's game. Lifted to left field, and Henderson was playing him in that direction anyway and makes the catch. So Ricky takes care of Butler. Here's the Giants lineup again, if you miss the pregame introductions. With Butler leading off. And then Thompson and Clark. Mitchell is in the cleanup spot. Holbrook fell in the lineup tonight, hitting fifth. Matt Williams, Terry Kennedy, Pat Sheridan, eight, and Garrels. Robbie Thompson, 241 during the regular season with 13 homers. And anything but the typical number two hitter because he struck out 133 times during the regular year. One and one. I think it's only fair to, to note that he did have some shoulder problems that bother him in the second half of the season. In fact, got a quarter zone shot two days ago. Very gingerly taking both throwing and hitting practice yesterday. One and two the count. If anything, the Giants had more players benefiting from the delay than the A's. Clark with a knee and tonsillitis. Thompson. Mitchell's wrist and Robbie Thompson gone on strikes. Here's the split fork ball. Your preference and down goes Thompson. Well, they call it a fork ball in Oakland. Split finger fastball in San Francisco. I tell you, 18 miles apart, pitch still does the difference. The same thing. Just goes down. You can't pick up the spin. It's an off-speed pitch in some sort. A little bit slower than uh, Stewart's 88 to 92 mile per hour fastball. 18 miles via the San Mateo Bridge. Eight miles if you're a bird. In the air, down the line, curling foul, and Lansford giving chase and sliding and unable to backhand it. As in Oakland, plenty of room here in foul territory. It tapers off down the line, and Carney comes up checking his wrist. Candlestick Park, a stadium that was built in the late 50s and opened in 1960. The Giants came west in 58, spent two seasons at Old Seal Stadium, then moved in here in 62, and this is the first World Series game they played here since 1962 as Clark swings and misses and the count is on two. Yeah, Will said that, that basically the pattern that Stewart had with him, nobody on base saw a lot of fastballs, somebody on base split-fingered fastballs. Course, Still 0 2. Excuse me, Albert. Timmy, you know, of course, you're a former hitter, four decades. Pitcher will change. I mean, that's part of the baseball. You have to change as a hitter. That's Stewart, right. of course, may change tonight. They both watch the films. I don't know whether Stewart's inclined to change as much. He threw a shutout his last time up. And one of the few people who did give him a problem that night was Clark with a single and a double. He had two of the four hits. And the other time it popped up and lined out. So three out of four times. He had to be happy not with the result of the game, but his at-bats. Yeah, remarkably, Dave Stewart winning 20 for the third year in a row. His first shutout of the season this year. And Clark gone on strike. So after the A's get two in the top of the inning, the Giants are gone in order. End of one in game three. Still a spectacular sight. Boy, you can only ponder. It's amazing. You look at it from the blimp. It's standing, folks. It sure is. There it is in all its regal splendor. The city of San Francisco. Cosmetically. <laughs> World Series, game three, second inning. Tony Phillips, the batter, check swing foul at the plate, even in the count at one and one. Phillips, Walt Weiss, and then Dave Stewart. Tony, switch hitter, and a most valuable Oakland A. It's a, such a high profile team, he's one of those kind of lost in the publicity shuffle, but not in the mind of Tony La Russa. Two and one. 
The only positions Phillips didn't play this year, he didn't catch, he didn't pitch, and he didn't play center field. But he played the other six. Terrific athlete. Some think he is the best athlete, pure athlete, on the Oakland Ball Club. Two and two the count. Spectacular sight. <laughs> Looking north into your shot for the moment came the Bay Bridge. As Phillips on a check swing foul rolls it off to the left and the count remains two balls and two strikes. Tell you, Al, as far as the Giants are concerned, it might be too nice a day today. One of the big reasons the Giants and Scott Gurrell's 10 and 2 in this ballpark, Roger Craig's troops, one of the reasons that they had the best record in the National League was because most of the teams that come in here have to fight the elements. Check swing, they appeal, and he's punched out at third by Craig. Nick Voltaggio didn't call it a swinging strike. The ball was dropped by Kennedy. He made the tag, and then it's official when Greg puts the big right arm up. See Voltaggio not making the call. He checks with Eric Gregg, and Eric gives him the strikeout sign. You can see right here, it's where the bat goes, and did he catch the ball in the air? Kennedy does it, and there's Eric. Weiss pops it down the line in foul territory, and that drops untouched in the bullpen. 0-1 oh, on Walt, who hit only three homers during the regular season, but homered in game one against Gorelts. Weiss with knee surgery missed about half the season. Last year's Rookie of the Year in the American League. 1-1. One and the home run came on a split-fingered fastball, same pitch that just struck out Tony Phillips. It was not a good pitch in game one for Scott Gorelz because he didn't have command of it. To center field, Butler gauging it, drifting back. Two down in the second inning. Two out, bases empty. The A's are ahead, 2-0. And Dave Stewart will come up, obviously, for the first time this season, even though Stewart, in parts of six seasons in the National League, hit 196. He was 10 for 51. There it is, his career mark. In there in the count of one. And it has been a long drought for American League pitchers in World Series play. Oh, for their last 67. Dating back to 1979 with Tim Stott. Team made of yours, Jim. Yeah, you know what happened that day? Uh, the Orioles were staging a rally coming from behind as a game they won. It was on the bench. So anyway, Stoddard, as you look at Dave Park, he couldn't even get anybody else in there. He let Stoddard hit. He got a base hit. A's gone in order to the amusement of even Parker. Candlestick Park, Al Michaels with Jim Palmer and Tim McCarver, game three of the World Series. Oakland on top, 2-0 as we go to the bottom of the second inning. And the middle of the order for the Giants, Kevin Mitchell, who led the majors in homers and runs batted in, and Ken Olbrich fell, and Matt Williams. Stewart set the Giants down in order in the first and begins by missing away here, ball one. One and no. Oh. Mitchell, three for eight in the World Series. And did pretty well in the playoffs against the Cubs. He was six for 17 as well, but that was all obliterated because of Will Clark's performance. Obliterated in the minds of fans. One ball, two strikes to count. Here at Candlestick tonight, all you needed, of course, was your ticket stub. The original game three was sold out. And the stub alone gets you back into the ballpark. Only about 75 people turn their original ticket stubs in. 
and Mitchell has gone on strikes and so Dave Stewart picking right up where he left off a week ago Saturday has retired the first four and he has struck out three in a row. Well, power hitter, power pitcher. He did not get that ball where he wants to. Try to go inside. You can see Steinbach sitting in. That ball's away, but you see the great movement along with the velocity that Dave Stewart has. Plus, he's already thrown enough split fingers to make the hitters look for it. Obrick fell at the plate. Obrickfell picked up from Pittsburgh in May, a most valuable giant coming off the bench this year. He was a regular, you'll recall, with St. Louis and Atlanta, then he went to Pittsburgh and then to San Francisco. And back in the lineup as Craig tries to find some punch. Giants limited in this World Series to nine hits in now 19 and the third innings. Count two balls and two strikes. Pitch hit base hit off Mike Moore. Just slapped it into left field in game two. Likes to describe himself, Ken does, as a patient hitter. And he said, that's what I'm going to try to do off Dave Stewart. Not swing at the split finger until I have to. I got to do it with two strikes. One of the raps on Obert Fell is that he's not an RBI man. And usually those two go hand in hand. If you don't strike out a lot, you don't drive in many runs. The right field, Canseco nearly misjudged it, but finds it and makes the catch. It's still a little tough right now in the twilight. Likes not having full effect. And they will in about another oh, 20 or 25 minutes. But for the moment, it can be a little tricky. Matt Williams, I guess uh, that statement there reflecting the thoughts of so many of the players on both sides tonight. One and no the count. Williams expressing his thoughts. Boy, you find out a lot about these players in, in times like this. Dave Stewart in particular. I mean, every time you saw Dave Stewart interviewed before, this tragedy was always in regard to baseball and you knew that he was an articulate man and an intelligent man but the, of all the players who have expressed their thoughts during this terrible time no one with any more articulateness than the man on the mound Dave Stewart and he can really feel it because he's from the area originally that's driven to deep left field during the regular season for the Giants. He had 26 in Phoenix. Gives him 44 and three in postseason play. And Kennedy gone on three pitches. So Stewart comes back to strike out his fourth Giant, but San Francisco gets a run. Sunset in Northern California. This home run by Matt Williams doesn't give the Giants the lead, but it gives them confidence. Only the second extra base hit in the series for the Giants. The other a double by Will Clark. And home runs no stranger to Stewart on a hanging split-fingered fastball. Came right back to get Kennedy out on the same pitch. 
Now, Ricky Henderson to start the third inning. Top of the order, Henderson, Lansford, and Canseco. One and one to count. Stu, I guess forever destined to finish second or third in the Cy Young balloting. It's going to happen again this year, probably. <laughs> oh, yeah, a lot of people wonder how you can be baseball's most consistent player or pitcher over the last three years and not win a Cy Young Award. Well, it's simple. Just have three superlative years, and then somebody each year has a little bit better. 87, it was Clemens. It was 20 and 9, the lower ERA. In 88, it was Viola. And this year, Brett Saberhagen. Saberhagen going 23 and 6 with the lowest ERA in baseball for a starter. It's 216, just a little bit lower than Scott Gereltz, who led the National League with a 222. 3 1 pitch is fouled off in the count 3 and 2 on Henderson. Ricky was one of the few A's who got here in plenty of time for the game. The team bus left the Oakland Coliseum at about 1.45 and didn't arrive at Candlestick Park until around 3.20 this afternoon. So they had a truncated batting practice as Henderson rips one into left center for a base hit and more as Mitchell has to play it off the fence and Ricky has a double. Henderson hitting it so hard that's the type of ball that's a guaranteed double on AstroTurf, but normally dies on the grass in this park, or at least is cut off by an outfielder. And Henderson able to drive it through the gap and winds up a second. We told you in game one and two that Henderson does not mind hitting with a 3-2 count. The reason, he knows you're not gonna be, he's not going to be walked. So you take a little bit off if you're the pitcher. He feels comfortable. And on AstroTurf, the ball bounding around is probably a triple. Lansford, look out, and the count is one to go. Lansford trying to go the other way. He has right field on his mind, so therefore he's ducking out over the plate. That's the second close pitch thrown by Scott Gorels. The other one, of course, by to Jose Canseco in the first inning. But that pitch looked more inside than it really was because Lansford, Lansford is trying to hit the ball the other way. Which he does there and strokes it foul in the count one ball and one strike. A great right field hitter reminds me of a, a great Oakland, former Oakland A, Joe Rudy. Similar batting style. Rudy with more power. But Lansford had a terrific year hitting 336. Only two home runs, so he hits the inside out of the ball. This is a perfect situation for him. One and one, Williams ducking in back of Henderson to keep him close to second, and the pitcher's inside. When Henderson's at second, you have to pay attention to him, much as you do at first base, obviously, because Ricky, if you give him a decent lead, and sometimes even if you don't, he'll take off. Well taken point. You got to make him stop, and he does not need a big lead to steal. And again, Lansford fighting it off, trying to go the other way with it, and the count two balls and two strikes. Roger Craig, Bob Lillis. Lansford again trying to go the other way. That's why Henderson isn't going to steal with, with nobody out. He's less likely to steal with, with none out than he is with one out. Because with nobody out, Lansford may push him to third, and for that reason, you don't need to steal third base. Yeah, Carney can help the ball club not only by getting the obviously Ricky Henderson to the third base, but he can hit the ball the other side right. and not really impair his batting average. He does that so much over the course of the season. Henderson stole third 21 times this year. The 2-2 two -two pitch just missing. Kennedy wants the ball. Well, Josh Houston. Well, you know, sometimes you even fool the umpire. That ball Ooh. is about dead center, just above the knees. In the NFL, it's strike three upon further review. <laughs> a 
Henderson at second. Nobody on. Third inning. Two to one. Oakland. Three two to Lansford. Got it. Three strikeouts for Scott Garrels. And Canseco comes up. Well, an umpire will never tell you he'll never ever evens it up. Ball looked close enough to call, and it was. Of course, I'll tell you what, you go back to that first pitch, Tim, that ball way up and in, it will make you freeze on the breaking ball. There goes Henderson. Canseco takes a strike, the throw not in time. Good jump, Ricky steals third. So, with one out, he goes. With nobody out, giving Lansford a chance to hit the ball. But there it is, a perfect illustration of what he normally does. It's just intelligent team play. Henderson giving Lansford a chance to get him over, and he took things into his own hands, or into his own feet, really. Giants compelled now to play the infield in, and the count on Canseco is one and one. He's the, in there. The only time that Henderson has been thrown out, he was thrown out by Kennedy at third base in the sixth inning of game two. That's Ricky's second steal of the series and his tenth in postseason. And tying the record set by Davey Lopes in 1981. One and two on Canseco. Jose, one home run in that championship series, and that, of course, was the, the monster shot at the Sky Dome. Fastball is a little squibber to third. Overkill able to check the runner, and they're going to say now a foul ball or not. Canseco is saying a foul ball, but the umpire, Voltaggio, is saying no, sir. And, of course, the Nippy Jones stories will now come out. What about the shoe polish? And LaRusso will go well, to Baltaggio and say, let's check with the first base umpire, Dutch Renner. The one problem is the Oakland Athletics have white shoes and the baseball's <laughs> white. That's right. <laughs> I think the ball might have hit him, and for this reason, I don't think you can act that quickly. If the ball hits your foot, as opposed to hitting the ground, you can't act that quickly. Talking about the NFL instant replay. That ball hit his foot. Mm -hmm. That ball came right off his foot. Meanwhile, that one hits Garrell, so who's able to recover, and a soft toss to Clark to take care of McGuire. And they check out Garrell, who really took a shot. A bullet back through the middle as he comes staggering off the mound. But the A's are gone, leaving Henderson at third in the third. Candlestick Park in San Francisco as we go to the bottom of the third inning. Another look now at the Canseco play here, Tim. This is very, very close, and if an umpire can't tell, it appears to have hit his foot. If an umpire can't tell, you've got to go by the reaction of the hitter. Now, see, that ball appears to hit Canseco's foot, but his reaction was more telling than that, than that instant replay because he stopped. Your natural inclination when you hit a ball on the ground that didn't hit your foot, you run to first. But because he stopped, I think that was the best indication of all. Pat Sheridan leads off the bottom of the third by hitting a soft bouncer down to Phillips, and he's gone. So one away here in the bottom of the third inning, and the batter will be Scott Garrels. Yeah, you're exactly right. And it's, a, it's a case of you, you know it's off your foot or it's hit your foot, so you figure what everybody else knows. Right. And you can't think that quickly. A more telling sign of you trying to get away with something would be to run three steps toward first and then stop. Then it's a different story. Here's Gareltz. I mentioned Nippy Jones. You go back to 57, yeah. the Braves and the Yankees, and one of the key plays in that. Jones hit by a pitch, and it was only determined that he was hit by a pitch when they discovered the shoe polish on the ball. One and one. Good thing he used his kiwi that day, huh? <laughs> that is Alcatraz, the island sitting out in the middle of San Francisco Bay. Marin County in the background, and 
the great city of San Francisco in the foreground as Garrell fouls it away in the count one and two. Butler on deck. Garrell's this season with two triples, including one which ended up with him on the disabled list. And down he goes on strikes. Garrell, in a game against the Cubs, in fact, we were doing it as a Thursday night telecast this year, hurt himself sliding into third and wound up going on the DL. Two down. And Brett Butler is the batter. And a reminder, tomorrow, Saturday. And then we're back here tomorrow at 8 Eastern time for the World Series game four. Butler hits a soft fly ball to Dave Henderson. And nine of the ten Giants have gone down. The only blemish on the Stewart Ledger, the home run by Williams. 2-1 Oakland. San Francisco, World Series resuming tonight. Game three. And on to the fourth inning we go with Dave Henderson to lead off. Then Steinbach and Phillips. And the first pitch is outside for a ball. Henderson, a two-run double off the top of the right field fence in the first inning to give Oakland the lead. You know, you walk around the area, and people have said, and I'm sure they've said it to you guys, too, tell everybody we're okay. We're okay. We're bouncing back. The city's fine. Come on out. Boy, and it is a special city. People have been fantastic. The whole area. There's a drive to deep right center field, and that one is gone. Dave Henderson this time hits it over after hitting the top of the fence in the first inning. This one clears it by a couple of feet in the fourth. Boy, such a clutch player for Oakland playoffs World Series even when he had a bad playoff the one hit he got was a home run that was an 86 two outs two strikes and fine center fielder and he's put it on a show tonight Garrell tried to come up a little bit different pitching better here's Steinbach rounding one to short a nice convenient hop for Matt Williams and the A's catcher is out number one now what Garrell would like to do is get him out with breaking balls he Threw him two breaking balls, got behind, had to come in with a fastball. Still got to hit it, and that's what Dave Henderson did. An idea of what kind of strength Dave Henderson has. He's always been a good hitter because he will hit the ball the other way, and he can do it with power. Plus, the ball carries better to right center in this ballpark than any other part. And that one carries very well to right field, and that one is gone off the bat of Phillips. And the giant bullpen is busy. Well, you've got to wonder, Al, what the line drive off the Relts did last inning. He came off the mound. He's had that type of year where you don't want to leave, but all three base, or three really hits this inning have been hit right on the number. And here comes Craig. It's always a tip-off. When the catcher looks over into the dugout, it's almost as if he's saying he's lost it. And Kennedy took a long look into the dugout, and Craig comes out. And Kelly Downs throwing in the bullpen. And in he comes. And as we mentioned before, Craig has to manage like this is the last game of the year. Garrell's out. Downs comes in. In town, the lights come on, and at Candlestick Park, the A's are trying to turn the Giants' lights out. They lead 4-1. to one. Garrelts leaving the game. And again, Garrelts was hit by this line drive off McGuire's bat, ending the third inning. Definitely, you see Weiss hit it to Park at first. And there's two down, but that had to lead to his demise. Hit him on the right side. We really couldn't tell from the angle whether it got him in the arm or in the right rib cage. But again, if you have a kind of year that Garrell's have, you're not going to leave the game until Roger Craig has to do what's best for his team. Something you really can't understand either. I mean, Scott Garrell's in 193 innings during the season gave up only 11 home runs. In postseason play, in about 18 innings, he's given up seven home runs. 19 innings to be exact. 
Of course, your competition is a lot better in postseason play. You're playing against the best. Oh, also, more innings than he's ever pitched before. As you look at Kelly Downs, a couple of innings. Game two is pitched extremely well. Resilient rubber arm. Good slider, and he gets to face the pitcher. And he's a hit on him. No balls and two strikes. Down really one of the unsung heroes in the league championship series. Twice coming out of the bullpen and effectively filling the role of long man. Kelly Downs, the 0-2 pitch is just outside. One and two. All the runs have been scored off San Francisco's starting pitchers. Bullpen has done a fine job when they've got into the games. One ball, two strikes. People two. sitting at home. Excuse me, why you don't start a Kelly Downs after he pitched so well in the championship series? You got to go with the guys that got you to the to the playoffs. And again, Downs, as we said, even though he's had some shoulder problems, has shown Roger Craig. A great fastball, a good slider, and again, that resilient arm that can bounce back with only a day between pitching of performances. Well, I think Craig felt that that was the, the perfect role for Down with his reconstructed pitching staff because he could do something that he figured Gorelts couldn't do. Soft looper right into the glove of Thompson. But a couple of homers in the fourth by Dave Henderson and Tony Phillips. Four to one is the score, and back we come after a word from our ABC stations. You know, folks, you can help the Bay Area rec recover from the earthquake. You can make a credit card contribution by calling 1-800-453-9000 or send your contribution to that address, P.O. Box 37243, Washington, D.C., and specify that your contribution go to the Bay Area Earthquake relief effort. World Series resuming at Candlestick Park. Game three, the A's are on top by a score of four to one, and Robbie Thompson to lead off in the bottom of the fourth. Thompson, Clark, and Mitchell. Robbie struck out of the first inning and waves at a breaking pitch and doesn't get it on one. One hit for the Giants. That a home run to left field by Matt Williams which is his only hit in the series. Got the inside corner, and the count is 0-2. And on three pitches, down he goes on the fork or split finger. Second time he has struck out. And in three and a third innings, that's six strikeouts for Dave Stewart. And Will Clark talking to himself as he comes up. Well, that's the advantage of staying ahead. Dave Stewart doing a terrific job staying ahead. Six strikeouts. And he has used those fork balls to his advantage. But if you don't stay ahead, hitters won't swing at the balls out of the strike zone. Clark lines it in the center field for a base hit. So with one out, a single by Clark here in the fourth inning, and the crowd comes very much alive again as Kevin Mitchell comes to the plate. And that's the way to combat that when they try to get ahead, hit the first pitch. Well, Will Clark went home, watched the films. He said, hey, Stewart, like I said, Stewart throws me fastball with nobody on, and that's what he got, and he pinked it into center field. Struck out in the second inning. Takes away ball one. Now you talked about the home runs. You're looking at the home run leader in the major league with 47. Stewart threw 23, three in the playoffs, and then one here tonight. Never ever a three run home run. No grand slams either. That's grounded into the hole and a base hit, and the Giants have runners at first and second. Coming to the plate. 
Similar pitch that Matt Williams hit for a home run, except this ball is a little bit farther outside. Fork ball up in the strike zone. And you see it. Perfect example of Kevin Mitchell's strength. Took a ball outside and pulled it by the third baseman. Overfell fly to Canseco in the second inning. One and oh. Dave Stewart needs a ground ball, but this season he had about a, a hundred more outs in the air than he did on the ground, which means that in a situation like this, you can't look for the double play ball as you would normally. Stewart does not throw a lot of ground balls. Crowd chanting, OB, OB. Two and up. Yeah, about the only time you're going to see somebody hit a ground ball is if he got ahead and could throw that fork ball. Well, it's 2-0. and oh. Real good hitting situation for Oberfeld. As we told you, a patient guy. He can look for his pitch. 2-0. and oh. He knows Stewart with a 3-1 lead. Doesn't want to walk him, especially with Matt Williams on deck. He's already homer. up in the Giants' pen as Craig looks ahead. Williams is hitting in the sixth spot. Kennedy is on deck. Bases loaded. One out in the fourth. Four to one A's. And the one-two pitch to Williams in the dirt. Two and two. by Stewart and a big second out. Two down and Kennedy comes up. And that's seven strikeouts for Stu. Wonder how you win 20 games three years in a row. You got to make clutch, clutch pitches at clutch times. And you can't be afraid to throw the ball over the plate and challenge a hitter. Of course that challenge was right on the outside corner. Now Kennedy who's been cold at the plate in postseason Swings and misses. He hit 239 during the regular season. In 
inside. One ball and one strike on Kennedy. First things Dave Stewart will tell you, how do you win 20 games? You take advantage of an underrated defense. McGuire at 6'5", about 230. Well, he just heads off a ball destined for right field. Would have tied it up 4-4. Four to four. Good play by Stewart covering first base, something you do all spring training and really paid off here. Great agility for the big guy. So the Giants settle for the two on Kennedy's two-run single in the fourth inning. And now on to the fifth. In the top of the order with Ricky Henderson facing Kelly Downs in the pitch inside, ball one. One thing McGuire's play did is it kept Downs in the game. Had he not been able to throw Sheridan out at first base, Craig would have been compelled to go to the bench, and then Brantley would have been in. Now you not only have Downs pitching in the top of the fifth inning, but assuming he keeps the A's close, he would probably lead off in the bottom of the fifth. Strike to Henderson. And the count is two and one. If young hitters could only understand that you become a better hitter when you take a pitcher's pitch, that was the 15th strike Ricky Henderson has taken during the series. It's almost a misnomer. People say, well, how can you be a better hitter if you take? The reason to take is to get ahead. And Ricky Henderson often gets ahead in the count. Two 
one to the count. And now it's full. Yeah, and once again, he runs it to three and two. You know, it brings up a perfect point. Hitters that swing at balls hardly ever get strikes to swing at. Because pitchers are smart enough to know that they don't want to get them out inside the strike zone. They want to have them expand the strike zone. And Henderson is on. So, Ricky Henderson leading off, which is just the way the the A's like it, not only at the start of the game, but in any particular inning. It's the third time he's led off tonight, and the second time he's reached. And Lansford comes to the plate. Clark holding Henderson on at first. Ricky 77 steals during the regular season and caught just 14 times. And the pitch to Lansford is inside, ball one. And what he makes you do, Ricky Henderson, as a, as a pitcher, is most of the time you got to either throw a hard breaking ball or the fastball. It makes you jump because you want to get the ball to home plate in such a hurry. It ruins your timing. One and one. Downs both times on both pitches thus far to Lansford, keeping Henderson close to first. But again, as you mentioned, it's not the lead, it's can you stop him? When you take a look at Ricky, is he stopped? In other words, is he static? Is he stationary? This time he goes, gets a good jump, the pitch misses, and the throw to second misses as well, and Henderson with a steal. And there was a quick release, a good fastball, a good pitch for Kenny to throw on. No chance, because he had a running lead. His momentum was going to second base. It wasn't that his gravity was going towards the ground, going back to first base. Another thing speed does for you, it allows you not to have to give up outs. Normally, with, with routine speed at first base, Lancer, Lansford will be, would be bunting in a situation like this. He may be now with a count, two balls and a strike. But again, Henderson, after stealing second, would be more tentative stealing third until there's one out. And he looked like he may have jammed his right wrist sliding into mm -hmm. second base. And Dr. Clark, Al Clark, takes a look at it. Meanwhile, Henderson, 11 steals that breaks Lopes's record in 81. And again, of course, you only had the World Series through 1969 when the leagues expanded and divided into divisions and then postseason play. And in 81, in fact, Lopes had an extra set of games because that was the year of the strike and they had divisional playoffs as well. Inside ball three, three and one the count on Lansford. So Henderson setting the record in what would be his eighth postseason game. Five in the playoffs and now three in the series. And Lansford is on. So Downs has walked the first two A's here in the fifth inning and Canseco comes to the plate. And Cray goes to the mound and what's the most important inning for Downs because the Giants scrambling back into the game with two in the bottom of the fourth. And the last thing they'll want to see is the A's reestablish a two or three run cushion. Yeah, any momentum that the Giants have going for them can be stifled right here. First two guys on. Boy, what a tremendous year Lansford's had. I, I only one month that he hit under 300. I think that was June. Two months he hit over 400. 336. And uh, Timmy, you told us that's the highest since uh, he led the American League in the batting back in the early 80s. Jose Canseco comes to the plate. He singled in the first inning to snap an 0 for 23 streak over the last two World Series. Then he grounded out in the third. And he comes up here with runners at first and second and nobody out. He's ahead by a run and the Giants not even remotely thinking but the infield back at what would be regular depth. And it's popped foul back into the upper deck behind us and the count is 0-1. There's Brantley again throwing in the bullpen up for the second time. Again the pitcher due to lead off at the bottom of the fifth. If Craig had to go to his bullpen here in the inning, he'd probably make a double switch and send 
either Maldonado or Nixon into right field and have them bat ninth and the pitcher hit eight. Henderson at second. Lansford is the runner at first. 0 and 1 the count. Breaking pitch. 1 and 1. So far, Tony La Russa having the runners running, Lansford and Conseco in the first inning with McGuire hitting. And that allowed Henderson to bat with two outs, and he drove them both in with a double. But had both runners not been running, McGuire may have grounded into a double play. On the corner, and the count of two and two. And they are trying to do the Giants to Jose Canseco exactly what the Dodgers did last year in the World Series. Pound him inside. Count on his aggressiveness to expand the strike zone. In other words, don't let him hit a strike. That's how they got him out last time on that questionable ball off his foot. Pickoff play at second and real close. Henderson going back and standing up. That's what made it close. Mm -hmm. Had he gotten down, it wouldn't have been this close. But he almost leans into the tag. That is a very, very close play. Ooh. And again, Thompson gets there. Ooh, close again. You know, a lot of times you'll do that to maybe cut a step or two off a runner's lead. But the way Henderson runs the bases, you're trying to pick him off. I mean, he's going to score in a single. You get a slow guy out there, you can make him a step or two back towards second to make a big difference for your outfielder. Or throwing somebody out. But with Ricky, uh -huh. drops down and it's drilled a deep left center field, and Jose Canseco on a 2 2 pitch. Has hit it out. A three run home run, and it's seven to three, Oakland. in the air in foul territory. Kennedy comes all the way back, runs out of room. One thing the A's have done consistently now in postseason in the eight games, they have taken advantage of walks time after time after time. They did it against Toronto, and two walks precede this three-run homer. Downs dropped down, and Conseco went downtown. Flat breaking ball. Hit it into area code 900. And they count only two. Yeah, that's the way to exercise the demons of World Series pass. Get a hanging slider when you're trying to make contact. You know he can hit it 550 feet. Well, he only drilled that one about 420 on the line. And the count on McGuire is one ball and two strikes. Now, if you went to any pitcher in the American League and you say, what's the one pitch you don't want to throw hey, Jose Canseco? That's a flat slider in the center of the plate. That's what Downs did. Breaking pitch takes care of McGuire, so Downs finally gets the first out of the fifth inning. One down, and it will bring up Dave Henderson, who has done his damage tonight by virtue of a double to score two in the first and a solo homer in the fourth. Oakland has hit three homers in the game. Dave Henderson, Phillips, and Canseco, and the Giants, the home run by Matt Williams. And your point about walks so well taken. 
of the nine Oakland Athletics that have walked, six have scored. Well, when you look at their lineup, there are, are situations, of course, in baseball where you can you could just say all of the time, hey, you, you can't walk people, it'll come back to hurt you, but especially in a lineup like this one. And there's another towering drive to deep center field. Butler goes back, and Henderson has hit his second home run. The fourth by the A's, the fifth on this winless night at Candlestick, and it's 8-3. to three. Everybody was figuring, well, the layoff would do one thing. The pitchers would be way yeah. ahead of the hitters. Say what? Oh, Ricky Henderson said it best. Hey, we hit off some pretty good pitchers in these inner squad games. It looked like they missed the beat. World Series record for most home runs in a game is six. We've had five. Here comes Brantley, and back we come to Candlestick Park. After this, Jeff Brantley comes in to pitch, and the first man he faces is Terry Steinbach. Brantley will hit in the number eight spot, and as we had suggested, Candy Maldonado comes into the game in a double switch in right field batting ninth, which means Maldonado, and there he is taking Sheridan's spot in the outfield will lead off in the bottom of the fifth inning. One out in the fifth inning, eight to three. Oakland, Dave Henderson with two home runs and a double that hit the top of the fence. Two and one the count. as a long man now but as Craig looks ahead and looks down the line he thinks Brantley will make a terrific closer and the count three balls and two strikes and that's one of the reasons 91 mile per hour fastball at least over the ability to throw it over 90 miles per hour pretty good breaking ball as almost all the pitchers here in San Francisco throws the Roger Craig split finger fastball Still three and two on Steinbach. Eight runs and eight hits for the A's, including four homers. Three runs and four hits for the Giants, including one homer. And that's ball four. So Steinbach draws the third walk of the inning. Phillips comes up. Home runs in two consecutive innings. Who's done it? It's pretty good company. Babe Ruth. Big Clue, Reggie, 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 Willie Mays, Akins, and D. Henderson does it tonight. And Tony Phillips could do it too. He homered in the fourth inning. Bay Day, Bay Day. <laughs> Yeah, I'll tell you what, if Phillips, after only hitting four all year, hits two home runs in back-to-back -back innings, we're playing with 1987 baseballs, in spite of what it says on them. They're going out like that tonight, but that, that's Candlestick Park on a windless night. On a windy night, you don't know what you're going to get. Because there's no such thing as a prevailing wind here. What you really have in Candlestick Park when it blows is wind shear. But tonight... And this is a typical October night. Everybody making such a big deal out of what will Candlestick be like in October. It was like that in the playoffs. Like that tonight. And we've got a balk. So you even have balks on windless nights at Candlestick. The most famous balk of all, of course, was Stu Miller in the wind in the All-Star game in 62. Now back live, that's in for a strike, and the count one and one. Oh, Vic Votaggio thought he started his windup. If you start it all and stop, of course, Jeff Brantley will tell you, I stepped off 
before I broke my hands or I stopped my windup. Let's put a runner in scoring position. One, one to Phillips. Good fastball, and the count is one and two. Yeah, still, but I believe Stu Miller still lives around in the area here. Boy, what a relief pitcher he was. Do you ever hit off him, Tim? <laughs> or try to hit off him? I was up there against him. <laughs> the head jerk, right? Oh. The parachute ball. In fact, he originated the BP fastball. Just a routine pitch he threw in there with a neck jerk. And Phillips has gone on strikes. Phillips, thinking it was the third out, was ready to flip his helmet away. He already thrown the bat away. And momentarily avoids a little embarrassment and would have had we not brought it up, I suppose. But <laughs> there it is for all of you to see. Oh, yeah. Three gone. Not quite. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's what long innings will do to you. Tony almost had our tape truck rolling in a commercial. Two down, and Weiss at the plate. The count one and oh. Eight to three open in the fifth inning. If the Giants go down 0-3, no team has ever overcome that deficit, but Several have overcome 0-2 since the mid-50s. None before that. The first time a team came back from 0-2, it was the Dodgers winning their first ever world title in Brooklyn in 55. But since then, it's become more common than uncommon. The majority of teams since that point have overcome 0-2. Two and one. There it is, nine of the last 17. And you don't have to go back very far. The Mets did it in 86. Royals did it in 85. And Weiss, it's a bouncer to the hole. Clark fields and flips the ball to Brantley, and that's that. But a damaging inning for the Giants as the A's pick up four and lead it eight to three. Candlestick Park, where the game began in sunshine at about 5.30. The Goodyear blimp hovering high above Candlestick Park. John Creighton is the uh, the pilot. Sully sending the shots down from above. Candlestick Park, which uh, was erupting in the bottom of the fourth inning as the Giants rallied to get back into the game. Dave Stewart, and we mentioned Dave Stewart and what he has said over the uh, this Terrible stretch of time. One of his remarks right there. And a man who we mentioned before is from the area. Born and raised in what's known as the East Bay. And now coming back home to enjoy the fruits of his career and he's at the pinnacle of it right now a man who as many of you know was released in 1986 looking for a job boy has he ever found one Maldonado on a half swing hits it softly by the mound Phillips is there to come up with it and Candy is gone on the first pitch in the bottom of the fifth inning so one away and Brett Butler comes to the plate Stewart released by the Phillies in 86 told us before the World Series that that wasn't the low point. The low point was five days later when the phone had not run. He said that was the lowest of the low. Because then you feel you may be done. Truly. Butler takes outside ball one. Yeah, and, and such outstanding ability. I saw a pitch early 80s and into the 80s. Always had a great arm. But he's certainly become an outstanding pitcher. When I say that, I mean really mixes up his pitches well. We have not seen a curveball. He used to be a fastball curveball pitcher. Tonight he has stayed really with a fastball and a split finger, and it's been a struggle. Butler hits one to center field. Dave Henderson is right there. Two down. But the one thing that Dave Stewart will do is throw the ball over. 
Only one walk tonight. That was over felt last inning. So with an 8-3 lead, he's not afraid to come in there, even if he gets behind. Well, the split finger fastball has really been his salvation. Encouraged to throw it by Dave Duncan. Interesting story about how Duncan learned about the split finger fastball. Robbie Thompson, it's a fly ball, a shallow left field, and Henderson comes on, and Ricky makes the catch on the run. So a quick inning for Dave Stewart as the Giants go out one, two, three here in the fifth. It remains eight to three A's and will return after a word from our ABC stations. To the sixth inning in game three, Al Michaels, Jim Palmer, Tim McCarver with the A's on top, eight to three, and Dave Stewart leading off. Then Ricky Henderson and Carney Lansford. And Stewart chops one off his arm at the plate. One and one on Stewart, who is 0 for 2 tonight, and again, no American League pitcher with a World Series hit since 1979. Dave not worried about hits, he's worried about at bats. He gets up four times, he's pitched well. <laughs> Shallow right center, Robbie Thompson says he'll take care of it. Stewart is 0 for 3, and Ricky Henderson comes up. It's the first time in the game Henderson has not let off an inning. Talked about Dave Stewart and that split finger fastball. Everybody thinks Roger Craig is the guru, and certainly he's the modern day guru of the split finger fastball. But we mentioned Dave Duncan. Dave Duncan, the pitching coach of the Oakland Athletics, found out about the split finger fastball in a very unusual way. Gaylord Perry, when pitching for the Cleveland Indians, there's Dave in the middle of your screen. When pitching for the Cleveland Indians in 1973, everybody thought. Dave told me everybody thought he was throwing splitters or, or spitters then, and he was throwing splitters, not spitters. And he saw how effective that pitch was, and it's been very helpful with the Oakland pitching staff in teaching it to them. That's grounded sharply on a hop to third, and Overfell fires to first, and they take care of Henderson. So Ricky is gone. Henderson, by the way, that's the 35th plate appearance for him in postseason, and he's reached 21 times, and that's 60%. So 60% on and 40 off. Oberfell throwing them out. Not a tough play, but when you've been a pinch hitter all year, they're all difficult. Makes it easily. Now Lansford hits it in the air to left field and deep and going back is Mitchell and that one is gone. And that ties a World Series record for most home runs in the game by a team and most in the game by two teams as well. It's nine to three. The Yankees against the Cardinals in 1928 hit five in a game, and there have been six in the game from both clubs on three separate occasions and now four. Canseco at the play takes a strike and the count is 0 1. And that's it high in the air to left field. Mitchell fading back, still going back on the track and makes the catch. And so even the outs are long as the A's go down in the sixth. It's 9 to 3, Oakland. Happy man, Walter A. Haas Jr., his wife Evelyn. He owns the Oakland A's. He's also the managing general partner, and he is a San Franciscan. But he is more of a an East Bayer in the world of baseball as his team is now 12 outs away from being one game away, one victory away from a world title. 9-3, to three. the A's on top as we go to the bottom of the sixth inning. Will Clark, Kevin Mitchell, and Ken Overfell. Two balls and no strikes to count on Clark. Hopped up in Mr. Weiss's neighborhood. One away. So one gone and Kevin Mitchell 
is the batter. And with the NFL season coming up to the halfway mark. And double D. And I don't know who else at this point. <laughs> it's the Mitchell for a strike and the count on one. The way things are going, you might make it. <laughs> well, game four here tomorrow. Game five, if necessary, would be played at Candlestick Park on Sunday. And if the series were then to continue on, Monday would be an off day, and then Tuesday, and if necessary, Wednesday, at the Oakland Coliseum. Rolling Stones notwithstanding. Don Robinson will be tomorrow night's pitcher. Rick Russell was hit the other day by a line drive off the back of his shoulder, had a flu as well, and he's been pushed back in the rotation. Big Daddy, and there he is. I think he's feeling a little better as far as the flu is concerned. The question is his shoulder. But Robinson is uh, in, in ink tomorrow, and Russell in pencil for Sunday. You know, baseball is a marvelous game, Tim. You talked about the fact that the Stewart's a fly ball pitcher, 100 more outs with fly balls and grounders, and on a night where the ball is flying, and he had to hit a home run. Excuse me, only the home run by Williams. Only three ground ball outs retired by Dave Stewart. He has struck out seven and walked only one. The center field, Dave Henderson moving over. And Henderson, who spent uh, a brief part of 1987 in a giant uniform, makes the catch. Well, we mentioned most home runs in a game. One team, the A's tying the mark tonight. The Yankees against the Cardinals. Babe Ruth hit three. Lou Gehrig hit one. I'm not sure if you heard of those two fellas, but I know you all remember Cedric Durst, who hit the fifth. Hits the overfill, missing ball one, one and zero. Oh. One and one. Yeah, his best friends called him Rick. You're certainly aware of that. There is the Transamerica Pyramid, accentuating the skyline of San Francisco. And that's a base hit into right field by Overfell. So Overfell picks up the Giants' fifth hit. Two out single here in the sixth inning, and Matt Williams comes to the plate. He homered in the second and struck out in the fourth. Tony LaRussa, Dave Duncan. but very playable for Dave Henderson and that's that for the Giants. Another air out to the seventh we go. 9-3 A's. And back at Candlestick Park on we go to the seventh inning. Game three of the World Series. The Athletics trying to go up three games to nothing and they lead it 9-3 to three. back of Dave Stewart and on the strength of five home runs. Mark McGuire who hit 33 during the regular season has not joined the home run parade tonight. Swings and misses in the count is 0-1. Or during the series, only Mark McGuire and Ricky Henderson haven't homered for the A's, and that includes Dave Parker, the designated hitter. So seven A's have combined for the home runs in this series. They have really spread it around. There's David. Night off. No DH here. Two and one. I wonder if Parker's going to have a matching set of those earrings after the, uh, the World Series. <laughs> yeah, he said, I won't help him offensively. He said, but I'll tell you what, I can cheer. I make a great cheerleader. Oh, he had a fine year. 38, come back to have that kind of year. 22 home runs, 97 RBIs, which led the A's. Three and two the count. Yeah, well, there you saw, well, there you saw Dave Henderson. You saw one earring. Probably will get the other one. With McGuire, 49 home runs three years ago, then 32, 33 this year. And 
the two guys in Major League history, the other guy, Jose Canseco, to hit 30 plus their first three years. And McGuire is on, so another walk to an Oakland day, and that's been poisoned through postseason for the opposition. And here is Dave Henderson. Hit a home or hit a double off the top of the fence, missed a home run by inches in the first, homered in the fourth, homered in the fifth. Outside of that, nothing. It doesn't look like the Giants pitching staff, not pitching in their squad games, are very sharp. You know, Grell struggled, Downs who pitched well, struggled not only with his control, but also the type of stuff he had, and Brantley's all over the place. One and the count. Bob Lillis, Roger Craig, Norm Sherry, Bill Fahey. Quiet giant dugout. Henderson fouls it away. Think about Henderson and the way he responds in postseason. The, the dramatic home run in the fifth game of the playoffs in 86, sending the, the Red Sox to an eventual pennant. And then were it not for the Mets' comeback in the sixth game of the World Series, he'd have won that game with a home run. Yeah. And also a sacrifice fly in the 11th inning, won it for the Boston Red Sox in game five after he had tied it in the ninth. Exactly. Lost in the shuffle. And that home run, by the way, in the fifth game of the playoffs against the Angels was his only hit in that series. One for nine. Mm -hmm. Two and one to count. Atley Hamager gets up in the giant bullpen. Brantley is due to hit second in the bottom of the seventh. This will be his final inning as Henderson fouls it away. It's funny how certain guys just, just seem to wind up where the action is. Joe Morgan used to be that way, whether he was at Houston or Cincinnati or San Francisco when the Giants uh, came close to, to winning a division crown in 82. Philadelphia, those guys would always seem to wind up in, in postseason action. And here's Dave Henderson. Boston in 86. The Giants in 87, though, he was ineligible for the playoffs. Oakland last year, Oakland this year. Oberk fell to Thompson 1, the first for 2. So they finally get Henderson and get a bonus as well as he grounds into a double play. And there are two down with the bases empty. And Terry Steinbach coming up. Yeah, I always felt that Dave Henderson was a realist in the statement he made during the delay from the earthquake, he said, you know, when guys were complaining, a little bit impatient, he said, let them go home. They're not under contract. They don't want to hang around and play the World Series, something we have strived all year for. Let them go home. That's grounded through Oberfeld's leg, backed up by Williams, and too late at first base. So E5, as Ken Oberfeld can't come up with it. And the A's with Steinbach at first base and two down. Have Phillips coming to the plate. Ball stayed down on Oberkfell. Watch it hug the ground. And Obie's glove is up. And it scoots on through for the first error of the ball game. And that brings up a point you made in, the, I think, first in 87. If you're playing the infield, you always want to stay below the hop. In other right. words, a lot easier to come up than to go down. That was a perfect illustration. I'll tell you, the first time I ever heard that explained in that particular fashion was from Bob Kennedy, who was the minor league director director of the Cardinals back in 1973. Kennedy. Keep your glove below the hop. And that's the Bob Kennedy who's Terry's dad. Right. And is now a Giants executive. Now is the minor league director of the San Francisco Giants. Two down with Phillips at the plate, and he grounds it toward the hole, but Thompson is there to one-hand it on the grass and get him. At the end of six and a half, it remains 9-3 A's. You know, one thing, the crowd is pretty quiet now because it's 9-3 for the opposition at Candlestick Park. It's worth noting, they were boisterous early on. It was uh, an ebullient kind of crowd, and there was no question the people in the Bay Area overwhelmingly wanted the World Series to continue. No question about it. No, they've been waiting for baseball for 10 days. I think they're a little tentative now, especially the Giant fans. Sure. Well, there was so much talk about whether or not the World Series would have credibility and all of the rest as Kennedy begins the bottom of the seventh by popping out to Lansford. But if you were here, and we have all been here 
through the duration and talked to people and felt the pulse and all of that, there was no question in my mind that the overwhelming majority wanted it to be played. In fact, there was a poll yesterday, a phone-in poll. The results were in the San Francisco Examiner, the afternoon paper. Four out of five said, keep on going. And it was real simple. The people who loved baseball wanted baseball. The people who were ambivalent about baseball before were going to be ambivalent after. It didn't yep. matter to them. But it was an option. It was a choice. And certainly the response tonight of this crowd with Ernest Riles hitting here for Brantley has proven it in spades. As we say right now, it's quiet because their team is down by six. But you could really feel it during the pregame ceremonies at the start of the game when Matt Williams hit his home run and when the Giants rallied for two in the fourth. I mean, they were really into it. Dave Henderson backing up over the track. And Riles is out number two. So two down here in the seventh inning. And Candy Maldonado comes to the plate. Atley Hamaker has made his way in from the bullpen. He'll be the new pitcher in the top of the eighth inning. There's Atley. You talk about momentum crowd being in the ball game you got to go back to that great play that McGuire made that Stewart on the ropes the diving sprawling play to end and inning in the third that would have tied it up check that the actually the fourth inning and if he doesn't get him at first base the other thing that would have done is it would have made Craig hit for Downs, and as it turned out, Downs didn't have it tonight. Three run home by home run by Conseco in the next inning. O2 pitch is taken high, ball one, one and two. A lot of people would argue, of course, the Dodgers had the lowest earn run average in ball of Major League pitching. They don't have a DH over there in the National League, but. Second consecutive year, the A's have led the American League and earned run average. And there's a reason for that. Postseason play, no pitcher winning two games in both the championship series, the World Series in the same year. And Stewart trying to, to do it tonight. There was, however, a pitcher that won four games in postseason play. That was Bird Hooten back in 1981. But one of those games was in the divisional championship series. When the Dodgers played the Houston Astros, they won one in the Divisional Championship Series, two in the NLCS, and one in the World Series. Now Donato barely stays alive in the count. Three and two. strikes and for Smoke Stewart that's number eight on to the eight. I'm tired of us centers getting no recognition I played 13 seasons in front of millions of Al Michaels Jim Palmer Tim McCarver to the eighth inning Atley Hamaker is the new giant pitcher and Walt Weiss leading off for the A's Owen won the count Weiss and then we're going to see a pinch hitter Dave Stewart has gone to the clubhouse he's done after seven Lance Blankenship has come out on deck. And then we'll see Ricky Henderson. There's a chopper, and it is a fair ball fielded by Obergefell. Throw too late. So Weiss legs out an infield single. Looks like it may have even bounced off the corner of the plate and high in the air, and so Weiss is on. And Will Clark does all he can. He tries to cheat. Watch him leave the base just a tad early. He tried to get it, but it appeared that Weiss just beat the play. Good call by Dutch Renner. Here is Lance Blankenship getting his first chance to play in the World Series. This year, spent some time at Tacoma, 
25 games in AAA, 58 games with the A's. He is the only rookie on the A's roster. And he looks at a strike in the count on one. He can play the outfield or second base. Assume the role of a utility man with Weiss out with a knee injury for about 65 ball games. And he fouls it away, and the count is 0 2. That's and a pretty good right fielder. I saw him make some excellent plays in Baltimore this summer. Very unusual that he's the only rookie on the Oakland roster, also, because Conseco, McGuire, and Walt Weiss were rookies of the year, three consecutive seasons 86, 7, and 8. So by saying that Blankenship's the only rooker, a rookie on the Athletics Club is by no means to say that they're an old ball club. Mm -hmm. One and two. And I think they have the makings of dynastic proportions. Yeah, I was just about too. to say that's going to worry a lot of teams in the American League. Right. But 99, yeah, 99 wins, 104 last year. And not only that, but as they say with Henderson on deck, they're they're prouder of what they've done this year with Canseco gone half the year and Weiss gone half the year and Eckersley was out for a quarter of the season and they were able to withstand the challenges of the the Royals and the Angels I mean the for most of the season you had the three best records in baseball all over the American League West City winning over 90 games. The same with the Angels. I think they won 91. Stayed right with them. 2-2 Two -two is ripped back through the middle for a base hit. Weiss will stop at second as Butler's throw comes in. And so back-to-back -back singles beginning the eighth inning and Ricky Henderson will be coming to the plate. He's on top 9-3. to three, Game 4 tomorrow, Saturday. 8 o'clock Eastern, 5 o'clock Pacific. We'll be with you. Boy, no chance. A lot of hard hit balls tonight. Mike Moore, who was the winner in game two tomorrow, and Don Robinson pushed up ahead of Rick Russell to work. 8 o'clock Eastern time from Candlestick. Manana. Ricky Henderson mentioned before Henderson one of the few A's who is at the park because he lives on this side of the bay and if, if Tony La Russa did I guess one thing wrong in this World Series he had the team bus leave a little too late today at 145 with the Bay Bridge down and down until the end of November that cuts off the major artery and that the A's had to come over on the San Mateo Bridge with a lot of traffic and they didn't get here till about 20 after 3 and Unless they had a shortened batting practice. So <laughs> you'd never know it. Actually, when I think about it, maybe La Russa was dead right. <laughs> they didn't leave it in the cage. Didn't leave it in the rehearsal hall, did no, they? No, no. But yeah. Henderson lives uh, Henderson lives here uh, in Hillsboro, where the elite meet the heat. And he is among the elite. To center field. Brett Butler backs up. The runners are both tagging. Weiss is on his way to third, and then Blankenship holds at first as the throw comes into second. So Weiss moves up 90 feet. The A's now have runners at the corners. As Henderson skies to center, and Carney Lansford comes to the plate. Yeah, good play by Brett Butler. It seems like it's insignificant, but trailing nine to three. But I'll tell you what, your motion wants you to have to keep the guy at second. But he doesn't throw that well. Good sense is let him go to third, keep a double play in order. Ricky's saying that could have been the sixth home run. He got a high slider and just got it up on the bat. Lansford chops one, and Overfill can't get it. And that'll score a run as Blankenship comes in. Or Weiss comes in, and it's juggled by Mitchell. And another run scores as Blankenship crosses the plate following Weiss and the A's add two more and lead it 11 to 3. And for Lansford his third hit 
He has a single, a walk, a home run, and now a chopping base hit. Outstanding base running by Lance Blankenship. Going to third, making Mitchell hurry on the throw, and because Blankenship went to third, he's allowed to come home because it's the second error of the game against the Giants. It's a single, it's one run battered in, it's an error on Mitchell. It's 11 to three, and the batter is Jose Canseco. Little squibber to short. Williams throws the first, and that's too late as Clark has to come off the bag. And Lansford goes to third. And the two third basemen get together, and it's almost as if Oberkull said to Lansford one of those nights, and Carney said, yeah, I know. You can see Williams, he hurries, but Canseco can run. And right here, Clark trying to stay on the base. He is safe. But I'll tell you what, Lansford, who was at second, went to third. I think Will Clark's thinking, hey, he may go home. Kind of undoubtful in an 11-3 ball game, but I think Will had Lansford on his mind. McGuire hits one in the air, twisting foul and dropping back out of play. 0-1. So Canseco with a single. He has three hits tonight. The A's have 13. And strangely, McGuire has none of those. And he's the cleanup hitter. So on a night when they tie the World Series record for most homers in the game, the man in the four hole hasn't hit the ball out of the infield. Of course, one of those did a lot of damage. The ball off Scott Gerrell's right side eventually led to Scott leaving the ball game. Barrage of a couple of home runs. 0-2 the count. A's ahead 11-3. So all three games routes to this point. 5-0 Oakland in game one. 5-1 Oakland in game two. Not quite routes, but mini routes. Certainly domination because of the pitching. They've outscored the Giants 21 to 4. That is a collective route. Right. Leffert's throwing in the bullpen. That's hit back off Hammaker's glove. Thompson is there. Off balance throw. Gets him for the second half. But coming in to score is Lansford to make it 12 to 3. So McGuire will get an RBI 1 4 3. Third run across in the inning. Down to second on the play goes Canseco, and Dave Henderson comes up. Well, not hit hard off the fist. And you can just see what makes Robbie Thompson such a good second baseman. That's great range. Showed you about his bad arm. Doesn't get a lot on this, but McGuire does not run well. Two down. One and go the count. in the middle of your picture is the man who goes to the mound tomorrow and he'll try to preserve a start for the other man who was in your picture Rick Russell that's one that sliced foul down the line and back out of play and the count one and one probably wondering what Don Robinson is thinking about after watching the home run barrage by the A's the professional pride makes you think you're going to pitch better than your teammates. You're going to learn from their mistakes. And they like Don Robinson because he's got such a tremendous competitive nature. Knee problems kept him from pitching as much as he'd like. Well, with a 12 to 3 lead, Dave Henderson finds a way to go to first base the hard way. And I'll tell you what. Somebody from San Francisco is going to go down next mm -hmm. inning because this is a purpose pitch. Yeah, early in, earlier yeah. in the game, it didn't appear to be intentional, but this one appears to be certainly more intentional than earlier. Yeah, you know, if you're Tony La Russa, you don't want to see your guys get hit. You know, also, you don't want to get the 
in a throwing contest because what happens most guys get hurt I mean, either one of somebody on your team or whatever but the one thing Tony will not stand for is guys throwing at Dave Henderson's or McGuire's or Conseco's you just can't let it happen 1-0 pitch is whacked into left field for a base hit Mitchell comes up with the ball as Canseco rounds third and he comes in to score and it's 13 to 3 on a single by Steinbach as he joins the hit parade that's his first hit of the night Roger Craig goes to the mound and Craig Lefferts will very possibly be summoned into the bullpen and you can turn that possibly into definitely. So in will come Lefferts, the sprinter. With the A's on top, 13 to 3. Eighth inning, it's 13 to 3, Oakland. Craig Lefferts comes in to pitch, and Tony Phillips becomes the ninth A to bat in the eighth. And the pitch away, ball one. So the A's with two on, two out, four over in the inning. Ricky Henderson's mom, Bobby, she, she moved recently, had a new phone installed, gave her son the number and said, Ricky, don't lose that number. Oh, you well, no, stop it. Yeah, well, it's 13 to 3. What do you want? <laughs> One and one. Oh, help me, Rhonda. <laughs> that is uh, Ricky's brother, Tyrone. <laughs> one and one to count. Ball two, two and one. Tyrone loved that line. <laughs> yeah. So did Dave. So did Dave, yeah, right. Guess which team's ahead. That's hit in the air to center field. Brett Butler is there. And he makes the catch. But the A's bat around in the eighth. They had four. And at the end of seven and a half, it's 13 to three, Oakland. 13 to three, the A's on top. Those in yellow making a change or coming into the game. The new right fielder, Stan Javier, he'll hit in the two spot. Lance Blankenship, the second baseman, stays in the game, hits ninth. The new pitcher is Rick Honeycutt, who will bat in the three spot. Canseco comes out of the game. Tony Phillips at third base now moves over from second. So you saw the defensive alignment as Honeycutt takes the mound after Stewart goes seven. And Danell Nixon will lead things off against Tony Cutts. So Nixon batting for Butler. He'll be followed by Thompson. And Litton has already come out on deck, so even Robbie will come out of the game. And then Clark. Two hopper to short. One-handed by Weiss over to McGuire. And quickly one away. Robbie Thompson do up and Greg Litton to bat for him to make his first appearance. Goodyear blip hovering high above. Candlestick Park. Where they have begun to file out as you might suspect. But did we get an official attendance figure tonight? We'll have to round that up for you. It was totally sold out as Litton grounds one just out of the outstretched reach of Weiss in the center field for a base hit. So Litton is on with one out in the eighth inning, and Will Clark will come to the plate. You know, Litton, who had an excellent year, a utility player, can play a little bit of the outfield, infield. An alley hitter, and he does what you want to do. Is you're trailing by 10 runs, 13 to 3. Hit it back up the middle. Another perspective, you got a pretty good idea of what kind of range Walt Wright Weiss has at shortstop. Almost got to that ball. 
The attendance tonight, 62,038. And it's just about total capacity. Clark fouls it away. I thought, actually, the only people who probably didn't show up are those who may have thrown away their ticket stubs or lost them. Or, I know a lot of people obviously came to town and then had to leave town for whatever reason. But uh, about as close to capacity as you can come, though they have begun to filter away. 0-1 on Clark. Of course, for those who have followed this franchise through the years, it is some sight to see this place filled. The Giants were a team that were a step away from leaving the area in the mid-70s, the nadir of the franchise. Horace Stoneham starting to run out of money. In fact, it, it precipitated the great line by then third base coach Joe Amalfitano in 1974 when Patty Hearst was abducted and nobody had any idea as to her whereabouts. Joey said, why don't they check the upper deck? Nobody's been there for five years. Clark fouls it away in the count one and two. But Bob Lurie took over in 76, and back came the franchise and the A's as well under the Haas family, and now the Bay Area, once thought by some to be unable to support two teams, does so now to the tune of next year probably over five million people. Will Clark runs into Rick Honeycutt. Joe D. Joe DiMaggio next to Bobby Brown. And Joe, and you, you've probably been reading about him with his home in, in the Marina District, but he is now, we understand, able to move back into it. I'm not sure he is in it, but I know he is able to. The house has been checked. He will be without natural gas for about five months, though. Pipeline still broken. Kevin Mitchell takes a strike in the count of one one. Well, the earthquake, of course, knows no boundaries, and it's brought home when you, you take a look at that shot of, of DiMaggio waiting in a line with his neighbors trying to check his home last week. One and one. There is a fella in the ballpark tonight, as a matter of fact, who, who was going to move into his home on the same street on which Joe DiMaggio lives, and that's Bob Welch. He was going to move in November 1st. Cosmetic damage done to his home. Grounded to Phillips at third. He waits for Blankenship to get over for the fourth, and the Giants are done in the eighth. On to the ninth, 13 to three in front of Joe D. For the Giants now, Donnell Nixon, who hit for Butler, spells bread in center as well, hitting in the one spot. Greg Litton, who batted for Robbie Thompson, takes Robbie's spot at second, hitting in the two spot. Kurt Manwaring comes in to catch. Terry Kennedy is done for the night. Kurt hitting in the number seven spot. And to the ninth inning we go. 13 to 3 A's. Craig Leffords delivers to Walt Weiss. Ball one. One and the count. Weiss hitting for the fifth time in the game. And when your number eight hitter comes up five times in the game, you know you've had a big night. Dennis Eckersley. Not much to do tonight. No saves on this horizon. Two and one. I'll tell you, the more you think about it, when Dave Henderson was hit in the top of the eighth inning, Rick Honeycutt didn't retaliate in the bottom of the eighth inning, and I think that was a very shrewd move. And the reason, I think literally, you let sleeping giants lie mm -hmm. in this particular instance. Mm -hmm. I mean, the A's have just blown the Giants out three games in a row, and they don't want them to get off the mat. Nope, not at all. You're exactly right. There's Litton underneath it with Maldonado in the neighborhood. One away. Weiss is gone. Blankenship comes up. Roger Craig looking as much like Lyndon Johnson as ever. And we can tell you this telecast is presented by authority of Major League Baseball. May not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form without the express written consent of Major League Baseball. So this World Series after the long and unprecedented 
And tragic, of course, delay. Resuming and Philly picking up where it left off. Domination by the A's. And as life kind of comes back to normal, baseball is back and football played in the Bay Area by the colleges and by the 49ers. I guess we really knew it was back a week after the quake last Tuesday when a local insert in the morning news show here had as its lead Jaja in her impending sentence. I guess that really brought it back to reality. Sure did. <laughs> Three days in the jail of your choice. I wonder if they have room service. Two and one. Oh, that was her biggest concern. She didn't want to eat fattening food. I wonder if they put stars on their menu. You know, these are the, the healthy dishes. A little squiver off to the right of the mound, and it's overrun by Lefferts, and then Clark Sweet nets nothing but air, and Blankenship is aboard again. So Lance, who pinched it in the eighth inning and singled, will not get a base hit this time. They're going to charge Lefferts with an error. Third error, and it's a, it is a tough play because Blankenship, we've already seen his speed on the bases. Greg Lefferts knows he has to hurry. You see Clark with a, a board late tag right here. He's going to take it himself. Doesn't come up with it. Be the third error. Now Ricky Henderson up for the sixth time in the game. Looks for the strike. I'll tell you, if the Giants continue to play like this and the A's continue to play like this, the Athletics are going to be in the driver's seat like Jaja. Mm. Also. <laughs> all right. <laughs> and they'll be getting all that new jewelry as well. And the Giants will now be faced with a task that no team has been able to accomplish. Down zip three and win the World Series. In fact, win any postseason series, including the playoffs. Strike, one and two. Don Robinson goes to the mound tomorrow. He would have pitched in the original game three, the night of the quake. Bob Welch would have pitched in the original game three, the night of the quake, and each pushed back. gets back to first. Henderson hit that one off the end of the bat. And still gave it a pretty good ride. Two down. Saw that shot of Bob Welch. He was telling us before the game that he and his wife had looked for that house on the same street as Joe DiMaggio for 18 months and had yet to move in it. Closed it. And then the earthquake hit. Yep. About 10 days before he was supposed to move in. Mike Gallego will now pinch hit here in the ninth inning. Gene Nelson in the bullpen. What they did, they moved Javier when he came into the game into the three spot. We had assumed they were going to put him in the two spot. Normally you take the non-pitcher and move him higher in the order, but they're staying on deck batting in the three spot. So Gallego is really hitting for Honeycutt, and we'll see Nelson in the ninth inning. Gallego fouls it back. And there is Gino who will finish it up. One and two. to right. Loved by Maldonado. And the Giants come up in the bottom of the ninth, trailing by 10. Candlestick Park, 13 to 3. How about this game in microcosm? Dave Henderson. Tony Phillips. Jose Canseco. 
Hindu again. And Carney Lansford, five home runs. Dave Stewart, meanwhile, pitches well enough. And the A's are three outs away from being one game away from their first world title since 1974. Ken Oberkfell is the batter. Funny, the last time a team scored 13 runs in a World Series game, the Cardinals did it against Milwaukee in 1982, and there's the new defensive alignment for Oakland. In that game, in that 13-1 Cardinal win over the Brewers, Oberkfell was a Cardinal. So he's seen it from both ends. I think that was game six in St. Louis. John Stuper, the winning pitcher, and he pitched a complete game with about a three-hour rain delay in that ball game. Meanwhile, the Giants on the short end of the... The biggest run output in World Series history, the Yankees scoring 18 in a game in 36. The Yankees got 16 against the Bucks in 60, but of course Mazarovsky ended that World Series with a dramatic home run and a Pirate title. Three and one on Overfell. Will Clark, he was one for four tonight. So Gene Nelson, the third pitcher, and you saw the new defensive alignment with Tony Phillips moving to left, Mike Gallego now at third, and Matt Williams coming to the plate. Giants three runs tonight, but only six hits, and what that means is the Giants have 15 hits in almost three complete games. Two extra base hits, a homer and a double in three games. 0-1 on Williams. local time, 5 Pacific, 8 Eastern for game four. Shallow left center field. And there's Phillips giving way to Hindu, and Dave Henderson makes the catch. Well, you're seeing all that Tony Phillips can do tonight. He even gets into that picture for us, and we talked about him. He's moved from second to third, and, and there he is in left field. Ricky on the bench for the rest of the night. One away, Tony Phillips. What? Oh, what uh, LaRousse is able to do tonight, too, is get everybody some action. Gets Blankenship into the game. Javier. Van Waring takes outside, ball one. It's turned into a game like yesterday's game that the A's played against their winner instructional league team. Mm -hmm. Trying to get everybody in the game and get some work. Little looper to shallow right field, and coming in and not able to make the catch is Javier as Van Waring almost runs up the back of Overkill, who winds up finally at third with Van Waring at second. So a little dunker down the line winds up as a double. It's the Giants' third extra base into the World Series. And with runners at second and third, Bill Bates comes up to bat for Lefferts. And the reason Oberkfeld pulls up is because of Javier's excellent speed. He almost makes the play. He's played a lot of center field, a lot of right field when Gonsenko was injured early in the year with a wrist injury. He almost turned a double into an out. Ken held up, almost got run right by. Bill Bates the answer to a trivia question. He and a couple of others who have both performed for the A's and the Giants. He was with Oakland in 86 and 39 games. And this year up and down between here and Phoenix. And Roger Craig really loves his bat. Hurt his shoulder a couple of years ago. Snapped his collarbone in two in winter ball. Was 
throwing has been a problem, but they think he may be starting giant catcher in 1990. There's a high drive to deep left field. Tony Phillips goes all the way back, and that one is gone. enough so that it does change it to the extent that the, the plate umpire Vic Voltaggio and Roger Craig will get together. And what will they decide to do? And the Roger says, okay, let's let's keep going. We've got enough light. What Roger's looking for though right now is the light at the end of this tunnel. Thirteen to six is the score. Well, in a World Series, we will never forget. Obviously, they're going to wrap this one up without a light bank. One and one to count. There it is. Somebody didn't pay the bill. All the way. Meanwhile, the crowd in the upper deck in center field, lighting matches, <laughs> flashlights. A lot of people came with flashlights tonight. Twinkle, twinkle, little star here. And call strike three. And Maldonado would like to blame it on the lights, but he's blaming it on Voltaggio. See for yourself, 2-2 two -two pitch. Andy thinks it's low. Vic thinks it's not. They always get the last word. Two down. Nixon is at the plate with two out in the ninth inning. And time called as somebody throws a ball onto the upper deck. And Weiss makes even that play flawlessly. As the A's have done defensively through the whole series. One and the count. 
the only error the A's have made on the first play of the game back in game one. That was Dave Stewart's throwing error. Yeah, it's amazing. I'm watching, I'm looking at all of these flashlights. It's incredible how many people brought flashlights to the game tonight. I mean, they brought the, the emergency kit right with them. The ballpark twinkling. And it's grounded in the center for a base hit. Nixon with a two out single in the ninth inning. And Greg Litton comes to the plate. And Todd Burns throws to the bullpen. And Dave Duncan's going to visit the mound. And actually, it's LaRusa who's going to visit the mound. After Duncan had started out, Tony says, Nope, I'll take care of it and bring in a reliever. Announcing a new generation of owner satisfaction. We're so sure you'll... Greg Litton to, to hit here in the ninth inning. Facing Todd Burns, the A's are an out away from wrapping it up. They lead 13-6. The Giants have Nixon at first base. Two down. And the pitch away for ball two. And that's ground and fair down the left field line and into the corner. Nixon heading toward third. Phillips tracking it down in foul territory. Nixon around third. He'll come in to score on a double by Linton. So it is 13 to 7. And Will Clark comes to the plate. A lit second base hit. Good hitters count. You see the first pitch to Clark. It's high. I don't know if they ever came back from ten runs, but I do know they came back from trailing by seven and by nine. Nice hit. In the regular season in Cincinnati in a game in which they taken most of the regulars out they came back and at one point were down eight to nothing in that game and then they erased the seven run Dodger lead in September as well. Matt Young is in the bullpen. In that game in Cincinnati Will Clark was taken out for a rest and Mike Alaga a first baseman that is not on the San Francisco roster figured prominently in that game. Had a game-winning two-run homer. And he also had a huge three-run double off Hershiser in a 3-2 victory in September. And Clark has won. So, runners at first and second. And this uh, walk in the park has become uh, a little something different for La Russa and Dennis Eckersley. All of a sudden goes to the bullpen. And Dave Duncan goes to the mound. If nothing else, this is this is not what LaRusso wanted to happen in the sense that if he gets Eckersley's up, he wants him to pitch. He doesn't want to waste him throwing on a night when he doesn't pitch. He's real careful about that, but he doesn't have that luxury right now. He's got to get him up. Thirteen to seven. Inning, the Giants have hit around. Mitchell one for four tonight. One and oh. So maybe the Giants have found the secret. Just turn out a bank of lights in center field. They are still without power. One and one. And it's 
one and two. So Burns is within a strike now. The funny thing, we lose power in a night where the most power ever as far as home runs has been exhibited here in a World Series game. Seven home runs in this game. And now the power is coming back. Sporadically. <laughs> One and two on Mitchell. Breaking pitch lifted to left field, but right toward Phillips, who has to back up, and that's it. So the Giants in the ninth send nine to the plate, get four, but come up well short, and the A's are one victory away from their first world championship in 15 years. And the Giants are looking right into the face of a task that no team has been able to accomplish down 0-3 to come back to win either a World Series or a League Championship Series. So on a night when a new record is set for most home runs in a World Series game, a total of seven on this winless night at Candlestick Park, Don Robinson is faced with the task now tomorrow of keeping the Giants alive, and he's down on the field with Joe Morgan. Joe? Thank you, Al. Donnie, I feel that of all the Giants starters, you're probably best suited to pitch against the A's down 3-0. and How do you feel about tomorrow's start? Well, Joe, you know our backs are against the wall now, and uh, i got to come out tomorrow and try to throw some quality pitches. Uh, hopefully we can grab a lead early, and uh, uh, hopefully that, uh, that, that we can just play better than what we did tonight. You see anything different in the scouting report that you want to try tomorrow? Well, you know, they're hitting the ball pretty well. I think tonight, uh, without the wind blowing, uh, a lot of balls went out of the ballpark tonight that, that wouldn't have on a normal night here. So hopefully for me, tomorrow night, that, uh, that the wind will be blowing and, uh, and it'll be a regular candlestick night. How's your knee? Well, I won't know that until I warm up tomorrow. Hopefully it'll be okay. Thanks and good luck. Thanks, Joe. Back to you, Al. All right, thank you, Joe. And, of course, the big man tonight for the Oakland A's, big man among many Dave Henderson he began the night by hitting a ball off the top of the fence Pat Sheridan leaping he was there vertically but not horizontally as it bounced off the pipe and came back and that double scored two runs to put Oakland on top then in the fourth inning Henderson leading off against Scott Gerelts hit this drive to right center field that was gone and then in the fifth inning, after Canseco had hit a three-run homer, Henderson hit that shot, and it was gone. He subsequently hit into a double play, and then he was made to pay a price in the eighth inning when he was hit by a pitch, and Hindu is with Gary Thorne. Gary? Thank you, Al. Hindu can do. That's the sign in Oakland in the outfield, and Hindu did tonight. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Uh, it was a whole team effort, and, you know, a lot of guys pitched in, and we hit the ball well tonight and, you know, put uh, 11, 12 runs on the board. And, makes it easy for the whole team. You know, you were just saying it's a matter of timing. Uh, you make some outs, too, but tonight the timing was perfect. I think that's the name of baseball. Uh, you can go 0 for 4, and uh, you get a base hit in the ninth inning to win it, you're a hero. <laughs> Look, you guys didn't even take batting practice today, or it had to be uh, shortened because you couldn't get over here in time, and still pounding the ball. Now, everybody was saying after the delay, the hitters would suffer. Not so. Well, I think it's uh, an individual thing, and... Uh, you know, with me, a little time off helped because I wasn't hitting, you know, <laughs> the first couple of games. And uh, it just helped me to get my mind straight and take a few days off and, you know, get my swing back. Sometimes you have premonitions of nights like this. Did you feel you were going to have a good offensive night? Anything particular tonight before the game? No, not at all. I thought I was going to catch a ball over the fence and rob a home run and, you know, make a few great defensive plays. And, you know, it'd be a 2-1 ball game. And, you know, i come out smelling like a rose. Hindu did. Thanks. Congratulations. Thank you. Al? All right, thank you, Gary. Well, that's the story from Candlestick Park. There are the...